Does image stabilization today have a significant impact to our image quality? When should we use a stabilizer and when is it better to avoid? And for the case that you think you know already everything about image stabilization, there is a crazy exception when I use a stabilizer or thought it were suggested not to do. Everything about image stabilization in this video. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. I got a question and I hope to pronounce the name right. The question was from Eve and Eve wants to know why it is suggested to switch off the image stabilization when we use a ribot for instance. Good question Eve, because everyone recommends to switch off, right? But is this really necessary also with the technology of today? Well, let's have a quick look how image stabilization works. I will not go into detail here, just roughly. Generally, there exist two different types of image stabilization. On the one hand, we have lenses which support image stabilization. Lens elements simply compensate for shakes here. And on the other hand, we have in-body stabilization, where the sensor inside the camera body, obviously, compensates for shakes. And in modern system, in-body stabilization and lens stabilization work together and we get out sharp photographs freehand even with amazing long shutter speeds. So simplified, a stabilizer works a bit like a gimbal if you want. It always tries to compensate for shakes and this is obviously what it should do. And now it is suggested to turn off image stabilization when we put our camera on a tripod. But, but why? Well, in the one hand, usually we don't need a stabilizer when we use a tripod, right? But why is it so important to switch it off? Couldn't we have it on all the time? And the idea behind this is simply when we have image stabilization on, the sensor or the lens element, however, always tries to compensate. Also, if there are no shakes there, it always is ready to move. And as it needs any kind of motor or so to move the sensor or the lens element, there are always micro vibrations when the stabilizer is on, what could lead into soft photographs. And the second thing is, when you expose longer, it could be that the sensor or the lens element compensates, although there is nothing to compensate. And this would lead even into really, really blurry photographs. Let's call this second issue needless adjusting. So micro vibrations in the one hand, needless adjusting in the other hand. And these were the reasons for the idea, since image stabilization was invented actually, always turn off the stabilizer when you use a tripod. So now the question is, because meanwhile the technology improved amazingly, do these two things, micro vibrations and needless adjusting, still have a significant impact to the sharpness of our photographs? And yeah, I mean, there is only one way to find out, right? So what I've done for you now is I've been out for taking some test shots and as I have still an injury at my knee, I've just been out in my garden. So let's have a look at my test shots of my garden house. I used my Sony a7R4 with my 70-200 G-Master lens at 200mm and f8 with different exposure times. And what I've done is I took five test shots without stabilizer and five with. So let's do a bit of pixel beeping here. Let's compare the roll files. So this is a detailed shot of my garden house with an exposure time of a 20th of a second. <laughs> and when I look at it now, I think the windows were grateful about the clean. But however, let's zoom in to 100%, what is really close with 61 megapixels. And when we go through the first five test shots now, without stabilizer, we see that each of it, really each of it is quite sharp. So yeah, the lens work as it should. And now it gets interesting. Let's also have a look at the five test shots where I turned the stabilizer on. Same settings, 200 millimeters f8 at 20th of a second. And again, with image stabilization on this time. And when we have a look at the first shot, we really see a significant difference. Let's have a look at them side by side. So left, we see the shot with that stabilizer. And right, we see that one with stabilizer. Again, we are at 100% of 61 megapixels here. 
but even if we go to 50%, so let's go to one to two, so also here we can see a significant difference. I hope we can also see this after the compression over YouTube, but yeah, here on my screen, the difference is really significant. But let's also have a look at the other dash shots with image stabilization on. The second one is also blurry, the third one is much better, but still a bit softer. Same with the fourth and the fifth. The fifth is quite okay. So finally we can say one of five is okay, four or five are blurry. So before we go over now to longer exposures, what do I think so far? I mean, except by the fact that the window should get cleaned. I, I think when you photograph for Instagram only, or if your photos will just appear on a website or something like this, it will not really be recognizable if you have the image stabilization on or off unless you crop in very close obviously but if you need higher resolutions if you want to print for instance i would really recommend turn on image stabilization only if you really need it we will talk about that in a minute when to use image stabilization let's have a quick look at my test shots with a shutter speed of 3.2 seconds and even with 25 seconds well with a shutter speed of 3.2 seconds and image stabilization off I get sharp photographs again, all five are sharp, but when I turn on image stabilization, I get totally blurred photographs, even more blurry than with a 20th of a second. You can see the difference really significantly here. Not each of them got blurry, also here, at least one of five is quite okay. And now just quick, the hardcore test with an exposure time of 25 seconds. My test shots without stabilization are sharp but those with a stabilization are really, really bad and not really usable anymore. Although here even two or five, okay. But anyway, the most photographs with image stabilization are blurry at 100% view. I, I think longer exposures with image stabilization will still work with Instagram, but they are definitely not usable anymore for printing. So really, just turn on image stabilization if you really need it. And on my experience, there are two reasons when I turn on image stabilization. And the first reason is when I shoot freehand, obviously. You know, after a rule of thumb, we are able to hold an exposure time of one divided to the focal length without getting shakes when photographing freehand. So if I use a focal length of 200 millimeters and I want to expose without image stabilization, I can hold around a 200th of a second without getting shakes in my image. Roundabout, I mean, it's really just a rule of thumbs. The snipers amongst you will hold much longer, of course. But modern image stabilization is able to stabilize five stops and even more, what's amazing, because five stops, this means when I use 200 millimeters, I'm able to hold 100, 50, 25, 12, six, finally, a sixth of a second freehand. That's amazing, isn't it? And of course, when we do pixel beeping, we will also see a bit of motion blur at freehand shots when we turn image stabilization on. So what I do is I don't go up to the longest possible shutter speed I were theoretically able to hold. Instead of a sixth of a second, I would go more to a 20th of a second or even a 30th of a second or anything like this. And if I need even more light, I'm not shy to increase my ISO better a little bit of noise than blurry photographs. But there is a second reason and yeah, an exception when I go for image stabilization even when I have my camera on a tripod. You know, I like to climb around in wild rivers for taking photographs obviously and usually there is lots of vibration in wild rivers for all the water crashing down and also at rocks inside wild rivers or beside waterfalls is also often lots of vibration. And I had a problem with these vibrations, I think this is already Two years ago, I walked into a wild river and I wanted to photograph a little water cascade from the bottom side upwards. And yeah, this, this looked really fantastic. It was really a fantastic angle. I really liked the composition. But as there was too much pressure through the water, I always got shakes on my camera and it ended up in just blurry photographs. And some weeks or even months later, I went there again because I had the idea to turn on the image stabilization to get rid of the shakes and yeah, finally this surely worked for me. The inboard stabilizer of my Sony A6500 compensated for shakes so that I got out sharp photographs although there was much vibration through the water obviously. I think it was one of my first videos here on YouTube when I returned to the wild river and photographed one of the most beautiful waterfalls 
here in Austria. For the case that you haven't seen the video, I will link it up there for you. But yeah, that's really cool. Image stabilization also is able to compensate for vibrations in a wild river, also at a waterfall. So whenever I'm in a wild river or very close to a big waterfall where I can feel the vibrations, I always think about if it's better to turn on the image stabilization. I hope this was useful. Always turn image stabilization off when you don't need it. But this doesn't necessarily mean always to turn it off when you use a tripod. Oh, one more thing. What if you were out for photography and you come home and you recognize that you forgot to turn off image stabilization or thought it had been better to turn it off? Well, I think if it was just a short shutter speed, I would not really complain about it. If you had photographed freehand, you would also have a bit of softness through the stabilization. So no problem here. Maybe I would not crop in all too much in that case, but this is something I generally try to avoid by the way. But if you go for long exposures, maybe for some second or so, it's really, really that important to turn off image stabilization when you're not in a wild river or so. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, I'm really happy about a thumb up. And don't forget about your friends. Share this video on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, email, smoke signals, whatever. Give your friends also the chance to get sharp photographs with the right usage of image stabilization. And thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see You are the artist I'll never be Stay with me and I have no doubt You'll make a painting that makes you proud